Hello. Oh, that works. Um, so this should have been a double act between me as a PhD researcher um, studying Glasgow's allotments and Judy Wilkinson as my advisor from the Scottish Allotments and Garden Society. Um, and unfortunately, Judy couldn't come. Um, so I'm going to cover her part of the presentation as best as I can. Um, and then on the last slide, there's her email address. So if anyone has questions specifically for Judy, then just please email her, because I might not know. Um, so we wanted to come today to share our example of how a community and a researcher can be working together. Um, so I'm going to start the presentation with Judy's part about the Glasgow Allotments Heritage Project and how that led to um, the Scottish Allotments and Garden Society, which I'm just going to call SAGS, because obviously that took a while to say, um, how that led to them setting up a PhD studentship. Then I'm going to talk through my first year on the PhD, and then finish with what mine and Judy's plans are for the next two years. So the Glasgow Allotments Heritage Project ran from September 2010 to January 2012. Um, the SAGs received HLF funding and they formed a steering group with the Glasgow's Allotments Forum um, and then worked with plot holders to um, look at the history of their allotment sites. SAGs did this because they recognised that there's been very little research done on the history of allotments. So in England, there's been some sociological research on allotments, but still very little historical research. And in Scotland, hardly anything's been done at all. Um, and they thought this was a good thing to do um, because one of their aims is protecting allotments. And they thought that knowing more about the past would better equip them to be able to protect them in the future. And they also felt that people don't talk about why they, they're passionate for their plots enough. Um, so if you go on any allotment, you'll find someone who's incredibly obsessed with their plot and gardening and will want to tell you all about it. Um, but this doesn't get written down very much. It's quite anecdotal. So they wanted the project to have an emphasis on recording the personal stories that are coming out of allotments. So the project included um, archives work, oral history, photography and map work. But this developed into something bigger as they went along, as they found that the plot holders brought new skills that they didn't really know about in the beginning, because you're on your allotment, you're speaking to each other as gardeners. And then suddenly through the project, they found that actually your neighbor's a filmmaker or someone's an artist. Um, so they brought all these different skills to the project too. Um, so for example, there are two children's groups that were able to write um, a play about the allotment and their own songs. So the project was a, a really good example to show how diverse people on the allotments can be. And it, they were able to start recording it. So the project started through realizing that not that much research had been done. But then rather than getting to the end of it and thinking, oh, we've done it, we've cracked it, they realized that there was still a lot more research to do. Um, and then alongside this happening, um, Judy and other members of SAGS began talking to a chap called Victor Webb about his archive. Um, so Victor Webb lived in Edinburgh and he was born in 1915 and the negotiations to sort out what would happen to his archive it only happened in the last few years so he was obviously quite an elderly man um, and he'd had a plot since the mid 1940s and had been involved in SAGs from then and he'd, he seemed like he was a bit of a hoarder and he was keeping all of the papers from SAGs so all of the minutes and annual reports everything um, and he was also involved in a scheme called um, the Scottish Allotments scheme for the unemployed, um, which was set up by the Society of Friends in the 1930s. Um, and they set it up as a way of giving unemployed people a means to provide for their families by growing vegetables, but also giving them physical exercise and improving their mental health. So not being sad, but being able to go out and do something. Um, so he also kept all the material from this as a Quaker and as a plot holder. 
So it's quite a vast archive. So he gave it to Sags as he wanted to know it would be kept after his death. And then Sags thought, oh, what do we do with it? Um, but through the project, they'd met um, a university archivist called Sam Madra. So Sam suggested it could go into the university archive. Um, so this archive was used partly for the heritage project. But again, it was realized that there was still scope for a lot more research on Scotland's allotments. So Sam, the archivist, put Judy in touch with a senior archivist at the archives called Moira Rankin. He then brought together a meeting between um, Moira, Judy, and Marina Moskowitz from History, and Hayden Lorimer from Geography, who are now my supervisors. Um, and they discussed the possibility of a PhD on allotments in Glasgow. So they put in an application to the Arts and Humanities Research Council um, for a collaborative doctoral award. Um, and then that was it, and they got a PhD studentship. Um, so I'm afraid that's a process that I don't know much about because obviously it happened before I got here. Um, so particularly if people have questions about that for Judy, then ask her. Um, but we wanted to share that that happened um, to show it's a possibility for community groups um, because who are reliant on volunteers doing work in their spare time, sometimes the project's going to go beyond what's possible in spare time. So in this instance, they thought it would be helpful to have a researcher to be working alongside them. Oh, I just headbutted the microphone. Um, so <laughs> meanwhile, I was in York, um, and I was working as a community archaeologist for the York Archaeological Trust. And I was running a project that was very similar to Judy's on allotments um, that was also HLF funded. Um, and it had a similar reason to Judy's that we realized that there wasn't so much research on allotments. Um, but it had a, a slight more archaeological angle to it. So it, it came about as we realized in the trust that a lot of the archaeologists have allotments. And this seemed to have coincided with when they moved out the field and started working in the office and perhaps wanted a way to get muddy. Um, and then as people around them realized, oh, so-and-so is an archaeologist, they kept taking finds to them and saying, what do you think this is? Um, so that's how my project happened. Um, and as well as doing the archives and oral histories, we also had a go at geophysics and test pitting because um, a few of the sites uh, over Roman roads, so people wanted to look for those and we didn't find them, but everyone enjoyed it, so it was fine. Um, but one of the major frustrations for the volunteers on the project was that they didn't have a researcher to work with them. And this was something that was commented on a few times that it would have been easier for them to have a professional working alongside them. Um, so because the grant was very small um, and therefore my hours were small, um, my time was limited to organizing and delivering training events and then asking the volunteers to go out and do the work themselves. And for some this worked well and for others they felt they didn't have the confidence to be able to go and do it. Um, and it was also frustrating for me because I could see that they wanted to be able to go and do the work but they felt like they couldn't. And it was also frustrating um, as this is a topic that I'm very, very interested in and excited about. So I wanted to be able to go and do the research with them, but couldn't. So it's all a bit frustrating. Um, and at the same time, I was slightly worried that my skills weren't good enough through not having done enough archival research or, or history myself. Um, so as this project was coming to an end and other projects I was working on was coming to an end. I started to think about what to do next and then luckily saw the advert from Judy's studentship and applied to it and here I am. Um, so my hopes at the beginning of last year, so just in my first year, were that I, well, I was really grateful for the opportunity to then be able to go and do the research that I felt like I couldn't do before. So that was very exciting. Um, secondly, that I'd have the chance to improve my skills. So hopefully when I finish my PhD, I might be leading another community heritage project and then 
will actually have the skills to pass on to other people. Um, and thirdly, I was excited by the idea that there could be a relationship between me as a researcher and the community project, which I'd felt was a bit of a problem in York. So my first year has been spent doing quite general research on the history of Glasgow and allotments in urban ecology. So whereas other PhD students might have followed through the same subject from their BA and then their master's dissertation and into their PhD, I kind of came to it quite fresh, um, having always wanted to be a prehistorian before, so it's a bit different. Um, so my first year has been a bit like just finding my feet and deciding what to do, um, which has been nice that they're obviously SAGS's project as well, they've given me the freedom to be able to do that. Um, and also my first year has been spent using Victor Webb's archives. Um, so one of the things I particularly wanted to look at was protests and campaigns happening in the 1950s. And a lot of the archive is dealing with that. As there's a plot holder in the 1950s, Victor Webb was taken off his plot as it was redeveloped for housing in Edinburgh. So in the post-war period, there's obviously a lot of house building happening. And there then becomes a tension in the local authorities between the land that might be used for allotments or parks and other green spaces and where to put the new houses. So a lot of the archive is taken up um, by these campaigns. Um, but I think this goes back to the original idea that SAGS had, that it's these individual stories that are important for telling people what's happening. So it might not mean a lot to say, oh, someone's plot was destroyed for a house, but to say it was Victor Webb's plot that was destroyed for a house, people think, oh, no, poor Victor. Um, so it makes it a lot more personal. Um, and I've been using sort of opportunities that I have to give what I find um, to show it to the public and particularly to SAGS and the Allotments Forum in Glasgow. Um, so I've been writing a blog and um, I made a display for a celebration event, which is the same display I have out there. Um, and one of the other things that SAGS did for their heritage project was to talk to the Mitchell Library, which holds the city's archives in Glasgow, about getting allotment sites to deposit their own archives in the library. Because um, a lot of the time they're just kept at home or kept on site and things happen and they go missing. And that wasn't, people didn't really take up on that. But we're hoping that if I can show that I'm using Victor Webb's archive, people will think, oh, if that one was important, then mine's important too. Um, so that's what my first year has been about. Um, I've also been visiting sites across Glasgow and starting to build up an archive of photographs and I'm starting oral histories in the next few weeks. So I put these six pictures up to show how different the sites can be. So as you can see, some of them are incredibly formal and everything's in straight lines and then they're all quite intensely growing vegetables. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and other ones are making me for um, sculptures or doing different things. Um, so they're quite varied, and probably because the personalities on the sites are different. That's showing through what the site itself becomes. Um, and a good thing for me through doing the collaboration has been that it's quite easy to get into the sites. So other allotment researchers that I've met who are generally scientists or sociologists have struggled a bit to meet people. But because I have GD to show me who to talk to, and because the Heritage Project happened a few years ago, people on the sites are quite familiar with the idea of a historian or an archaeologist coming in. So it doesn't seem quite as alien as me just turning up and saying, hi, I'm an archaeologist and I want to research you. Um, so a nice example of this is um, with the allotment that's in that far bottom corner. Um, that's a very new site in Govan. Um, and the plot holders got their keys in December sorry, my voice is going, um, December last year. And I went along to one of their um, first meetings, which was with um, someone from the allotments forum who talked to them about how to set off growing vegetables. It's gone again. Can you still hear me? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> 
My voice is dying. <laughs> I've only got five minutes. Okay. So. Um, yeah, so I really started to meet you with Betty so she could talk to me about how to manage the site and how to get them growing vegetables because they were all very new to it. And then, and the nice thing there um, was that they, um, they invited me to then go along to the site. Hello, is that working? Just a second. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> no, is it not? Um, stage. Turn it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so they invited me to go along once a month and take photographs for them and um, do oral history interviews with them. And this is a really exciting thing, as I think if it hadn't been for the Heritage Project, they might have thought this was a bit strange, but it had already happened elsewhere, so it was fine. Um, so we were quite keen to keep building outreach events and community events as I'm doing my PhD for the next few years. So an example of this is next weekend we're building a hut as part of a festival at the university. And this is an opportunity to extend the community project and my research so we can collect stories about huts and photographs while we're there. Um, and it's also an opportunity to, rather than get people into an allotment, sort of take an allotment to them and show them what it's all about. Um, so we're hoping to do more events like this. So although the HLF project is finished, to make sure there's still opportunity for people to join in and keep doing little events. Um, so some of these are going to be quite planned, like doing oral history training, and some of them are quite spontaneous, like reacting to this festival and building the hut. Um, so I think for me, the collaboration has been very exciting so far, as it's given me um, a sense of purpose in my research that I don't feel like I'm just doing it on my own, but there's already people that are interested and I can share it with them and they might be interested too. Um, and if Judy was here, then she'd be able to say what SAGs are getting out of it, but hopefully they think that I'm continuing their project and the partnership is working well. Um, and the idea that we keep going back to you is these individual stories, whether they're coming from the archives or coming from oral history and speaking to people. And there will be these stories of allotments in the past that's going to enable us to promote and protect the future of allotments. Um, so that's me. Thank you very much for listening and putting up with my voice being quiet. And if you do have any questions for Judy, um, then her email address is in the centre there. Um, and if you want to find out more about the project, then the website's up there too. So thank you very much.